just to begin without an introduction, uh, during worship today, the Lord approached me in a very tender way and came and took my two hands in his, and then he walked me, walked me off into, I don't know if it was a cathedral or what it was exactly, similar to my first experience in Chronicles of the Bride. And he was just so tender. It was just a very, very sweet moment. I don't remember what else went on, but when I came to receive a message, he said, how did you like our time together? <laughs> and I said, it was so tender. And he said, yes, I am tender with my bride, especially with those who do not presume on my love and have deep devotion and respect as you do. I so appreciate your efforts to honor my presence more and more. I can't even begin to tell you how it melts my heart. And there was a time when I was really callous. I would say I allowed myself to be distracted when he knew he was waiting for me. And I try not to do that anymore at all. He continued, these are attributes I want my bride to have for so many have grown to see me as a familiar friend, not really taking into account my royalty and Godhead. It is not malicious, except for the enemy it's inciting it. It is more neglect and distraction, as you well know, that takes her away from me. Boy, do I ever know. Thank God he's worked with me on that. My precious brides, I need your extreme devotion and respect. Even though I am your very best friend, I am still a God. Your recognition of that in day-to-day -day life is very important to me. There are times when I want you to stop what you are doing and come sit with me. It's not easy to separate you from the things you get engrossed in. Nonetheless, it is very important to me even vital to me that you respond on the dime. It's not just respect. It is also an urgent need I want you to cover by your obedient presence. I promise you that you will lose nothing of what you are doing when you respond immediately. In fact, I will even bless with more grace what you were working on when you return to it. I want you to be an example to the whole world that nothing is as important as my presence and that I am worthy of prompt obedience. The people of this world will immediately recognize the highest regard you have for me by this immediate response. It is a fine line and difficult at times to handle our multidimensional relationship. I want you to feel at home with me. I want you to feel comfortable just melting in my arms in complete abandonment and rest, releasing all the troubles of the day into my faithful hands. There are times I want to dance with you in your wedding gown. There are also times when I want to swing on vines in heaven from one glorious place to another, laughing with joy in total freedom. Then there are those solemn moments where I need to advise and teach. Our relationship is truly multifaceted, and I enjoy every moment of our presence together. I am not a distant, nebulous God. This has been conveyed by twisted and darkened minds to keep us apart. No, I am with you always, by your right hand, and also dwelling in your heart, even as the scriptures say, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. That's John 14:23. Heaven is not a place of fluffy clouds and harp sounding. It is a real place where the whole gamut of activities takes place. 
their water slides, swinging vines, riding on sea creatures, worship and adoration and continuous song in the many dimensions of heaven. There is solemn prayer as well, contrary to some beliefs that you cannot pray in heaven. There are prayer meetings, spontaneous prayer, and vigilance over what is taking place on the earth. Not a moment goes by where prayers are not being offered on behalf of those still earthbound. There is the continuous work of arranging circumstances for new arrivals, assisting my bride before she departs, and especially arranging circumstances for the salvation of those who do not as yet know me. There are theology meetings where doctrines are either ratified or condemned, and then the work of carrying that out on earth is planned. There are books being written, movies being made, music being scored and sung, and symphonies being prepared and executing glorious music. If you can imagine it, it is being done. Yet there is no sex in heaven, because reproduction was already carried out on the earth. So when you arrive, you will be overwhelmed with the peace and joy of life without compulsions. There is no lack or shortage of he in heaven. Craftsmen create all that is needed, and everyone is provided with the tools they need to create with their own special gifts and calling. Listen, my dear ones. I want you to get a clear picture of your final home. I want you to anticipate what you will be doing and rejoice that whatever obstacles you had on earth will no longer exist in heaven. Get excited about what you are going to do. Let your imagination get carried away in my Holy Spirit to explore the possibilities. I want you to be excited and looking forward to what I have gone ahead of you to prepare for you and what I have in store for you. And that was the end of his message. <laughs> the Lord bless you, heart dwellers, and I pray that you'll be able to soak in these beautiful inspirations he shared with us so that we really can anticipate their new life in heaven that will be eternal. Amen.